Hello, my friends. My name is Reverend Terry Allen Christian. I'm the author of a book called What Did Jesus Say? The Seven Messages from the Master. I'm coming to you today from my upper room in my home where I do counseling with Christians online worldwide. I call it my upper room in my home, but before I had a home, I called it the upper room in my mind. And each of us should have that upper room in our mind where it keeps us aware that we're walking in God's temple. We serve his will, not ours. And each day we go one step further and mature in his understanding. I want to talk with you about what did Jesus say about prayer and about praying. I believe the answer to what would Jesus do is always within what did Jesus say. So I want to come to you from my book in message four, and this is filled with lessons of, that Jesus taught. My book is a teaching devotional with over 500 scriptures spoken by Jesus, and I've added no opinions and no comments from myself. But before we get started, let's be very clear about one thing between us and Jesus. Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Now, let's take a look at what Jesus said about praying. There's something that Jesus said to us about not doing. So let me cover that first. Jesus said, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they be, may be seen by men. They do this in social media everywhere now. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to the Father, your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you even ask. So right then and there, Jesus told us what to do and what not to do. So let's go into something else. What should we know before we pray? Well, here's a couple things we should know before we pray. Jesus said, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Again, he said, Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So number one, we need to believe in what we're praying for. Or there's no need to pray for it. Number two, Jesus said, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name, but I tell you truly, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. So now we know that uh, asking is very important, and we're asking in his name, and we know that believing is the major key to receiving. Now here's something that we're supposed to know very clearly before we pray, and very few people understand that, and so therefore their prayers aren't answered. Jesus said, Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. If you do not forgive men, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Forgiveness is a major key in our walk as Christians. Doing what Jesus said is a major key in our walk as Christians. Let's take a look at the prayer Jesus gave us for our life so that we can be, uh, you know, congruent and we can be constant with him and our Father in heaven. And then we add our other prayers that we already know God knows our need. So therefore, it better equips us for what we say in our prayers. 
But when we pray in the morning and in the evening, we should begin and end our day with this understanding. Jesus said, In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. My friends, Jesus often went alone to pray. Sometimes we need to get alone so we can be alone with God. Jesus went alone and prayed at the top of the mountain. He went for a walk and prayed alone. Jesus prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane that he could be removed from the penalty of the cross. And of course, his obedience to God is why we're here. Disobedience in the Garden of Eden was balanced by the obedience of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. We learned that Moses couldn't enter the Promised Land because of disobedience to God. Do not let man's religious opinions excuse away walking and disobedience with God. The greatest sin is the Holy Spirit telling us what to do and we don't do it. Disobedience is not a good thing. God seeks obedience from his children and he gives us a worthy uh, will to follow, which is his. I want you to know that one of the things I do is I offer private counseling to people that are seeking solutions to marriage difficulties, recovery effort, divorce. I offer a life walk for those that are restricted in their health and they need a healing. I have, I can offer you some ideas on this. I know what it's like to wake up with a broken heart, a busted dream and a love gone wrong all in the same day. Not all ministries are the same. My ministry is dedicated to help online people who want to find out more what did Jesus say and walk accordingly. To me, the word help, H-E-L-P, stands for helping everyone live peacefully. If there's anything I can do to help you, just click onto the link in this message. But let me leave you with this understanding. We must believe in what we're praying while we're praying it. We must make sure that we have forgiven those people that have wronged us. And if we have wronged them, we ask for forgiveness. If we're going to come to the altar in prayer, whether on our knees or standing up and looking at the heavens, we must be true because God knows our heart. So we must be true. My brothers and sisters, wherever you are in the world today, God loves you and so do I. If there's any way I can help, let me know. And remember, with God, all things are possible all the time, wherever we live, and any moment we call upon him. Goodbye for now.